This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love After Hours. This evening, I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Normal. Hello. And our live studio audience. Hello, live studio audience. And on the couch, we have Don, Mark, and Sam. Hello. Hi. Say hello, everybody. Yes. Hello, everybody. Yes. Hello, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no, this is after hours this is where you get rowdy and you scream in the mic and no, you know we'll play some punk don't, music don't and, scream in the mic because i've headphones on yeah i know and it'll give me a headache and then i'll be grouchy so we've been talking about shazow www.shazow.com did we actually put that in the i'm thinking i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember saying it which is a lovely b- we said shazow <laughs> like a billion times it's linked on the site but S H I Z Z O W dot com. Lovely. Because the first time I went there, I tried to go to Shazow, S H A. And I was like, this isn't what I want. It was, I don't even think it was anything, but I was like, this isn't what I need. You know, we, we, what we didn't ask in After Hours is where you guys got the name Shazow. Where'd you get the name Shazow? That came from the one member who's not here, uh, Ryan. Ryan. That's Ryan. It was his uh, uh, choice expletive <laughs> really uh it, you know show excitement about something um and it's it was an available domain name so did did he actually have the domain before you guys started or i uh, don't think so he kind of all three came together and realized we kind of had the same idea um and then the search for a name started. then you got the name yeah oh that's cool it's kind of cool to get a cool name like that when you don't already have one banked up that you're holding going yeah <laughs> when i found the killer app i'm going to put this name on it yeah <laughs> i'm going to name it this i think our our guest last week has like a same obscene number of i'm of speaking sites. from experience yes i know you are <laughs> dr normal has a few uh registered sites on the back burner that he's just waiting for something to call that he's like, i'll be 80 years old and it'll be like <laughs> i got it it'll be a social <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll be like uh, all right um, you know that that was kind of anticlimactic. This site parked by GoDaddy. Yeah, how many sites? I don't know. Yeah, do you guys have? Now is it just us and the, and Amber? Because Amber apparently Amber Case apparently like twenty six or something. Park sites as well. Do you guys like ever? Go, that would be a great name for something, and and then go and park the site. Come I, on. I try to resist the urge as often as I can, but I have. I don't know, more than a dozen probably. <laughs> there you go. It's not just that. You're sitting in a bar, you're having a drink, and something comes to mind, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> it's kind of kind of like drunk dialing, but it's yeah. Yeah. drunk domaining. But it doesn't hurt anybody except for your bank. I, well, your bank account, yeah. I do the, that'd be a great name, and then nothing with it. Yeah, yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's exactly. My, my yeah. method. Do, do you, well, you know they have a marketplace. You know, you do the whole marketplace thing and auction it off at some point. I mean, have you guys ever tried that? I, no, I, I don't, I don't buy them. I just think of them. Then. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's my method. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if that well, That's works. much more, you know, useful than our method because we just have a bunch of them just sitting there. Well, I hear you can make millions. Yeah, if you owned, like, <laughs> Microsoft.com, you could probably sell it to somebody. How do you know I don't? <laughs> because then we'd have millions. <laughs> oh, good point. <laughs> So this is After Hours. Is there anything aside from Shazal that you guys want to talk about? Yeah, what are you up to outside of... Do you have a personal life since you <laughs> work and you work on Shazal? Is there anything going on or is it just pretty much work Shazal, work Shazal, work Shazal? That's That's where I'm at. Yeah. You blog. Yes, you do. Where's your blog, Don? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, it, it is Fast Wonder <laughs> blog, but... Um, no, the other the other thing that I work on is Legion of Tech. So I'm the, the yeah. chair of that organization, and we do have a couple of cool events coming up. We have a That's happy right. hour on Thursday. We even have a sponsor, uh, Morph Labs. They're going to buy the first two hundred dollars worth of drinks. Who? 
Morph Labs. Morph Labs. Okay. Yeah. I thought, I thought you said more flabs. flabs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's much morph? funnier, but that's not what their name is. <laughs> so morph, like yeah. m- metamorphosize. Yes. Morph yeah. flabs. Exactly. Okay. Um, so that's on Thursday at 530 at the Green Dragon. And then we at the have. the Green Dragon? At the Green Dragon. Amazing. And I've never heard of a tech event being held at the Green yes. Dragon. Exactly. It's probably not on Shazow either. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there like four times this week. Um, and then we also have another event coming up called um, Side Project to Startup. Side Project Startup. What's yeah. that? So it's it's coming up in September, and it's all about how you can take your side project, oh, like, I don't know, Shazow, and turn it into a startup, like something that actually makes you money. Money, um, you say. And we're doing that um, alongside CubeSpace. So it's kind of co-hosted by Legion of Tech and um, CubeSpace. And then we have an Ignite Portland in... November, like November 13th, and Mm -hmm. we have a wear camp coming up in October. So we're still nailing down and announcing the final details on that, but that'll be mid-October, and it'll be all about geolocation stuff, kind of like like what we're doing at um, at Chazao. But there's there been wear camps in San Francisco, and a bunch of people flew from Portland to San Francisco to go to wear camp. Mm -hmm. So um, Audrey, I think, came up with the idea, Audrey Eshright, to do one here in Portland. And we're getting a lot of interest so far from people like TriMet and lunch, uh, you know, just a bunch of other yeah. geolocation companies around. That would town. be actually. I didn't really think of the practical implementation for that for TriMet, but that would be for public transit. That would be a really useful, mm-hmm. useful thing. I'm articulate in the evening. <laughs> useful, useful thing, not useful, just a useful, useful thing. thing. Yeah, so that's what I do for fun. I organize yeah. tech events. Uh, yeah, um, I was just going to ask a question that was already answered again. I was like <laughs> <laughs> looking at the board, doing stuff, and realizing that what the next thing that was going to come out of my mouth was a question about an event. So, so let's see what else. I can ask doing? Portland Ignite questions. I can ask Ignite questions. I have them. Oh, do we? Are, are, is there? Is she just mentioned it. No, 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 no. That's what. I, well, that's what I was going to ask. But I was wondering <laughs> if the presentations are all. Baked and ready to go. Correct. That's what I was going to ask. No, not yet. We are, um, we'll put up a notice and have people submit ideas for presentations fairly soon, probably within the next, I don't know, two to four weeks or so. And what will the deadline be? What will the what? The deadline. What will the deadline deadline, be? I don't know yet. Okay. It's it's November 13th, so it's still far, far in the future. We have plenty of time to plan. So... Um, the first Ignite, did you have trouble getting enough people to submit? Was it pretty much no? That has never been a problem. We've always had way more than what we can possibly accept. Um, and the Ignites have been really full. So the first Ignite we did at Widen and Kennedy, which held 300 people. Mm-hmm. And we had almost exactly 300 people. I don't think we turned anybody away. Wow. Which was um, fantastic. So we had to move it to the Baghdad after mm-hmm. that. Um, so the second Ignite, we moved it to the Baghdad. They did a feature story on us that was on the front page of the lifestyle section on one of the Sunday Oregonians. Mm-hmm. Um, and we ended up with way more people than the Baghdad could hold. Um, we actually, we let in at least 750 people before the Baghdad said, whoa, whoa, stop, stop letting people in. Wow. Um, and we probably turned another hundred away. Um, so that one was, um, in my opinion, way too huge it was unmanageable it was really difficult lines were long it was painful um the last night from my perspective was actually just about perfect i think we had about 500 550 people Mm -hmm. so it felt the baghdad felt full but not over full like Mm -hmm. it did the for the second ignite um so that that went pretty well i'd i'd be happy did you have to turn people No. no no we didn't have to turn anybody away i think actually a lot of people um and this is a little bit unfortunate for the third Ignite, I think people were afraid of standing in the general admission line because they're afraid of getting turned away. So we're going to encourage more people to do that because we only um, we only give away so many tickets Yeah. because um, you know we weren't sure how many tickets we should do and how many people should get in for general admission. We'll probably do a few more tickets and encourage people to stand in the general admission line because last time everybody who stood in line got in. Yeah. From, from my perspective, I got the tickets. I think I was on the tail end of, of the tickets being handed out. And I just felt like, uh, I'm actually going to leave my house. I'm not going to go somewhere and stand in line mm-hmm. to maybe, maybe get in. Cause I knew that uh, on the second one that people had been turned away and I was like, Oh, I don't, 
I want to go, but I don't think I can do that with my evening. So, yeah, and the the tickets the tickets were really interesting because we it was kind of um, it was a little bit disorganized because we organized the third ignite in a very compressed time frame because of bar camp, and so we got as soon as we got the ticketing system up, we just put it out on Twitter. We were like, all right, ticketing system's up, you know, go get tickets, and I think we sold out in twenty four hours. Is that about that? We're looking. Yeah, I think to it Todd, was, I think. It was we're, we're looking pretty popular. Todd. Yeah. It was <laughs> pretty popular. In, in the, have the quality, is the quality of presentations, is it pretty much the same or is it getting better? Because, I mean, this was the first Ignite that we'd been to and, man, those were great presentations. They were awesome. I mean, it's just, uh, a, know, it, I'm amazed at what you could sit through. The presentations five, have you know, always like, have always been pretty good. Um, I, I would say that the second and third Ignite presentations have probably been a little bit better than the first, only because people knew what to expect. So the first Ignite, I think even the presenters weren't quite sure what to expect. But we can only select about 13 presentations, and we have had over 50 submissions for the last two Ignites. Wow. And how many, how many slides do you get again? You get 20 slides and the slides auto advance every 15 seconds every 15 seconds right yeah so you have no that. control over your slide deck which is really interesting to present yeah that's that's i mean it's, and and the other thing too is um right now at gnome decks is that correct mm-hmm. there's a few of the presentations the legendary david hasselhoff presentation correct yes <laughs> Yeah, um, the the guys at Numdex ask um, Josh Bancroft, who um, they know and who's also on the board of Legion of Tech, and he was actually the the person who was the idea behind bringing Ignite to Portland. Um, he was talking to them, and they said, "Hey, you know, we're doing this for Seattle. We're having them give us four or five of their best presentations. Do you want to suggest some from Portland, and we'll give them free tickets to Numdex if they come up and present?" Wow! So we saw that wow. as a really awesome opportunity to get you know, four or five people from Portland up presenting in front of a, a big audience. And so I, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah. Who got to present? Do you know? It was, uh, I don't remember who the final ones were. I know, I know the David Hasselhoff mm-hmm. one. I'm looking at the studio audience. <laughs> do you know who the, who, who got to present for Ignite in Seattle? Do you remember? Eva. Oh, Eva from Cube Space okay. on startups and oh, not yeah. losing your mind. Right. Jason Grigsby. Oh, Jason Grigsby, Cup Noodle Soup. Oh, I like oh, that right. one. Cup Noodle that Soup. That one was fun. That I was really like that one. Oh, and How to Boil Water in Five Easy Steps, the mm-hmm. nuclear mm-hmm. reactor one. Mm-hmm. That was that great. Was that was one. good. Kevin Fox. Oh, and Kevin Fox, How to Buy a Car and Under oh, $1,000. Under, under was it yeah. under $1,000? I, I thought it was less than that. It might have been. I don't remember exactly what the amount was. Uh, how to Buy a Car for Under $1,000. It was $1,000. See? So there's somebody in the chat attention. room. So fantastic. And I started following um, Little Butterfly mm-hmm. on Twitter, mm-hmm. who did that awesome presentation about Afghanistan. Who I believe she's working on her book now. Yeah, and you that know, was we, amazing. We actually felt really bad about that presentation because the sl- um, the slides. If you looked at them on a computer, so when we did the previews of the slides, her mm-hmm. slides were amazing. Those photographs mm-hmm. were absolutely astonishing. And because of the old projector in the Baghdad, and it was a little bit dark, the projector just did not do those photos justice. Mm. So we would have, we're we're working on how we can lighten them, yeah. lighten up the projector for the next ones. But um, but a fascinating but they're on SlideShare. Sh- if you haven't looked at them on SlideShare, there's an Ignite Portland account on SlideShare. You should look at her slides because mm-hmm. the the photos were amazing. Is there anything that you think you guys will do differently for the next next Ignite? I think for the next Ignite, um, we're going to try to keep as much the same as we possibly can. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to be a little bit more organized because we have a lot more time to plan it. Mm-hmm. We're actually going to get a lot more people from the community involved in planning it. So what we've done to date has been mostly um, Ignite board, or sorry, Ignite Legion of Tech board members organizing all of the events, mm-hmm. which is not scalable, um, and we don't feel like it involves the community in the way that it should. So we're getting community members involved as sub-team leaders. So we're trying to get people leading aspects of like the, you know, coordinating presentations or coordinating volunteers and getting those led by people in the community who aren't on the board of Legion of Tech. So we're going to do a lot more um, bringing volunteers in. Very cool. Um, But other than that, we're going to try to keep as much the same as we possibly can. We're going to do some tweaks to the ticketing system, offer a few more tickets, but Mm -hmm. for the most part, try try to make it work as well as the last one did. 
I didn't see the previous ones, but I, it seemed like everything went really smoothly. This one was nice. Yeah. It was much better. The Ignite 2 was chaos because of the number of people. Yeah. Okay, before we move on to, to Mark and Sam, I believe that there was a question from the chat room uh, during the tech show. <laughs> So yeah, we'll be but I've crashed, my computer crashed since I don't have the, but it was John P, so I asked. So someone. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Technical difficulty we'll get there. Back we'll, there. We'll get back so, to that. So Mark, what are you doing? Um, I, I have no social life. I haven't since last September or before. <laughs> Good guy. Yeah. yeah. Get to work. Yeah, me. What are you doing here? <laughs> you should be working on <laughs> Go work on something. Go fix something. <laughs> it's a work event She's for me. This yeah. is like kind of social. So you can have a social life as long as it coincides with work in some way. I've got four jobs. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> That's very four, unfortunate. Like, distinct different jobs or? Yes. Like? Yes. Oh, boy. One full 40, 50 hour week and three Oof. other ones, including Chazelle is one of those. So one that pays you and three that don't? Uh, two that pay me and two that don't. So it's, yeah. it's a balance there. That's a good wow. balance. <laughs> wow. <laughs> drink a lot <laughs> dr normal you are now officially a slacker <laughs> uh, i've had my times i remember those jobs in it back when i worked for a big bank never mind no, i'm just sitting here relaxing with the microphone you know it's all good wow so so just yeah it's just kind of working hard and no social you gotta have some social so ride a bike or something right you know anything? it's portland Drive you ride a, a bicycle I don't. Take a bus, <laughs> you know. I want to get a bike. Bikes are fun. Drink a beer. It looks fun. <laughs> Wear a helmet. You get a beer and blog, right? Yeah. Okay, there you go. I'm usually sitting there working at it, but yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but people say hi, right, as you're yes. tapping yes. away. So that's good. You do martial arts, right? Yes. That's oh, that's job. something. Oh. See, that's one of his jobs, though. So. <laughs> but it's something. It is. Yeah. Yeah, martial arts. Oh, no, I enjoy my life. What it's kind of martial good. arts do you do? I do uh, Wing Chun and Tai Chi, mm-hmm. and I run a school teaching Tai Chi. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm familiar with Tai Chi. What's the other one, Wing Chun? Wing Chun, yeah. It's um, not as There's well a bad known. joke in there, right? Yeah, there probably is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I won't say it, because you might kick my ass. But <laughs> <laughs> I think you might kick your ass anyway. Uh, anyway. So what? what is what is it? Wing? Wing Chun. It's Chun. a Chinese martial art. It's a little more fighting oriented than Tai Chi. Well, a study. Um, so, to me, martial arts kind of have almost personality types to them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, tai Chi is the philosopher as a personality type. Wing Chun is the geek. It's geeky little human tricks you can do. Oh, I see. It's, yeah, it's right. Very sure. technical in pers- in its movements, yeah. and it's it's kind of the geek art of martial so arts. So it's all about if you do this with the guy's thumb, and you do this and that, you know, yeah. you're. It's yeah. So if the Vulcan strange, death grip were to be little positions, but <laughs> yeah, they work. Yeah. So if the Vulcan yeah, death right. grip were to be a martial art, it would fall into that category because it's very precise and something that you have to like. That's the dumbest question I've ever asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought it was actually pretty good. So believe proud it or not, usually question. I'm really hard on you, but I thought it was kind of cute myself actually. Like, but no, it is. I mean, it's like really precise, and it's so like a really like. And it's geeky because it's Spock. So there you go. There you go. I'm yeah. glad somebody got the. So I have a question from the chat room, which is le- less less dorky than my question. Don P. Don P. wants to know if Shazal is interchangeable with Fire Eagle, or compatible with Fire Eagle. Let's pitch that to Sam. <laughs> Sam. Uh, <laughs> at this point in time, no. Um, there's probably a discussion at least one a week on. Do we integrate with Fire Eagle? Um, do we not? Does it make sense? Um, do we, on our own, do what Fire Eagle is doing, just broker uh, location data? Um, could we do that? So it's it's a constant uh, topic with um, the founders, and um, it's yeah, it hasn't been ruled out, but we're not. We're no, not Don positive. P. Yeah. <laughs> And he, Don P also has a second question, and he wants to know... It better be, which martial arts do you know? <laughs> no. Don P would like to know, and Don, you're lucky that I'm asking this question, if Shazao is good for... <clears throat> did he use the word stalking? I don't have it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> my computer, 
if it's good for checking up on your ex boyfriend or ex girlfriend. We'll put it politely. Oh yeah, that, no, I saw that one. <laughs> Yeah, that was a silly after hours question. It was a silly after hours question, but I'm going to say that revolved around stalking the ex boyfriend. I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to feel free to answer for you if your ex boyfriend or ex girlfriend is on Giselle and they haven't made their shouts private, then then it probably could be very useful for that. Exactly, exactly. From Don P. Don P. Not the chicken dance question. <laughs> That's silly. Dr. Normal, could you please read the chicken dance question? <laughs> My question is, can they do the chicken dance? Give me a break. That's silly. <laughs> well, at least he didn't ask if we would do the chicken dance. Yes, well, we that'll be later. Or we'll, well, do that later. we'll do that later. I, although I don't have it loaded in the I don't, synthesizer. So I don't have know, a second martini, so I'm not capable exactly. of doing the chicken dance. I can't do the macarena either. So what about you? other things? Do you have a life? Um... Slight. What do you like to do? Slight, yes. Slight? <laughs> um, not too much. Your colleagues are here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no. Not no. a life at all. <laughs> I work very hard all the time. Yeah, I don't make sure not to shout from the beach. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Only from berry bushes. Yeah. Debugging code at Cannon Beach. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Shazao takes, takes a lot of time. Uh, right now, I freelance um, my 40 hours to, you know, pay the mortgage. Um, so you're a mobile, pretty much a mobile. Yeah, I work from uh, one of the mobile nomads, one of the many mobile nomads that we have in Portland yeah. now. Uh, Urban Grind Northwest is a yeah. common common office for quite a few of us. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't. I try to work at home, and I just I get distracted. So really, um, but I going mean, to a loud coffee shop, not so much. Well, <laughs> the the house is uh, 1923, so. I get distracted by there's always something I could be doing. Oh, trust me. I, yeah. We're familiar I know with exactly. That. You guys know that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. There's a wall a, that could be ripped that. down or a toilet that's running <laughs> yeah. or a floor that needs to be refinished or. There's you know. always something. Yeah. There's <laughs> gutters with leaves in them. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. I'm always able to find a quiet place, though, and just kind of close the door. I like working from home because I don't like working in a cubicle, but. You know, that's where I Well, work, yeah, so. but his choice isn't cubicle or his house. He could also go to a coffee shop and work. So, uh, you know, I'm going to bring this up because we were at Cube Space for Lunch 2.0. And my first question is, why in the hell would anyone want to come to a place, the Cube Space, to work in a damn cube? I've been working in a cube my whole damn career. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I want to do is go to a cube and... And, you know, it's like, well, you know, there's a conference room and you take this, you need do to you take a call Do you feel strongly about whatever. cubes, Dr. Normal? Oh, I love cubes. There's nothing like gray walls amongst gray walls. It's just really, uh, yeah, it beats the life out of you, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a recovering Java developer, so worked for, you know, like Nike and Standard Insurance and yeah. just a sea of gray cubes. Exactly, so. exactly. So now you go to Urban Grind or somewhere, yeah. you know, with a little something there to you know hang out and you know some scenery something yeah. and you're always bumping you get you know the kind of circuit we go on and you're always bumping into someone you know each day so yeah That's now isn't that aspect. distracting enough though kind of uh not, you can be pretty productive not too bad because of the people you're bumping into or a lot of them are freelancing also so they're you know they have their their work they need to do also. So. I was that kid in school that couldn't sit next to her friend in class. Or I would pass notes the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was actually a little leery of the whole coffee shop thing. And I, I was at Urban Grind, I don't know, a week or so ago. And there were, I don't know, like five of us. But for the most part, we were all working on our own thing. And people weren't weren't bugging each other. I mean, we were right. asking each other questions occasionally when something would something interesting would pop up but um it was much less distracting actually than i ever imagined yeah i was just gonna say i was just gonna ask you you kind of now are kind of in just kind of adopted that nomadic yeah because I, I also do freelance consulting as exactly well. so so you're fine you're enjoying it and i, I do yeah i i work fairly well out of my house too so i tend to do a little bit of both but you know, you can only spend so many hours in your house before you start to go stir crazy. So I do right. try to get out and work right. in coffee shops, go to the gym, that kind of that kind of stuff. Working from the gym, typing on the treadmill. <laughs> Four-hour workouts. I, I, I actually do that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I tweet and do email from the cardio machines. And in between sets on weights. 
Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank God for a spell check. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for multitasking. Exactly. I don't think I can do that. Oh, you know, speaking of multitasking, do you guys like listen to music while you work or watch TV while you work or anything like that? I mean, is there other things going on or are you kind of just focused on the computer screen and trying to shut things out? I, I listen to music. Really? And that that kind of helps when you're in a coffee shop. You throw on the headphones, that's kind of the signal that, you know, you're deep in thought <laughs> um, but, if you're with others yeah, um, yeah. The, it's a way any, to shut people out yeah anything else like TV or I, I can't yeah can't do both I vary um, sometimes music it rocks and definitely have to have music to keep going other times it's a distraction and I just yeah. need silence it, it's a mix I never know <laughs> yeah it kind of depends I actually found myself listening to music a lot more when I worked in a cubicle because there's so many, I worked at Intel most recently, so, um, well, Jive most recently, but Intel was the noisiest place I ever worked because there was somebody on a conference call, usually in like the all, all of the surrounding cubes, so you'd hear every single conversation. So I listened to music a lot when I was at Intel. There are times that Dr. Normal is at work and in his sea of cubicles, I will be on the phone with him, and I will hear very loudly from over the wall some woman who is talking on the phone very, very loudly. And I'm always amazed that anyone can get anything done with no walls. And no, I mean, there's there's the illusion of privacy because you've got the little cubicles, mm-hmm. but there isn't any. But yeah, I, it, but I found the foreign language music actually is is best for me because it drowns out the noise, but I don't get distracted by the lyrics because I don't understand them. Oh. So like German industrial bands like Rammstein or, <laughs> or, or Latin jazz like Pancho Sanchez or something mm-hmm. like that because I don't speak either language, so mm-hmm. it, it sort of helps drown it out. So it really doesn't matter the style of music, so it can be Rammstein or it can be it can be Latin music. It doesn't matter, just as long as it has foreign language in it, right? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I usually listen to <laughs> lyric list music like techno, Diesel Boy, and listening to a lot now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lyrics I'll try to follow and get distracted. Try yeah. to have a background <clears throat> as a musician <laughs> <laughs> and listen to music and not. Lyrics are no. And yeah, to be fair, he doesn't actually listen it's to It's really the tough. I cannot. It, it's, I, can't listen to, I can't listen to a lot of sounds or organized music or anything without. My, you know, I'm trying to read an email. My wi- mind's going, oh, listen to the music. What's going on here? You know, trying to deconstruct what's going on. <laughs> so I, I really have to have like silence. Mm. I mean, it kind of sucks. I'd like <laughs> to listen to music and tune things out, but it's very difficult. If I'm listening to music, it's in my head, you know, and then it's taking over my brain. So, <laughs> you know, I'll sit in the same sentence on an email like for 10 minutes. It's like, <laughs> okay, this isn't working. You know, actually, I had a great, I have a great story. We went to the Batman, whatever Batman um, Forever Batman Dark Knight, Dark Knight, Dark yes, Batman Dark. Oh, Knight. I know it's not Batman anymore, right? Yeah. All the cool kids call him the Dark Knight. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam West was Batman, but anyway, um, I, I have to say that Doctor Arnold was being very nice. We were having a date night, and he wanted to go walk. Was on. that the day you got the new Mac? No, it was uh, <laughs> it was right. a few days later. <laughs> anyway, same place, right? Bridgeport. Yeah, he and, uh, he wanted to go and walk on the riverfront and hold hands and stuff. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to go see an action movie. <laughs> Take yourself back to the conversation about two minutes ago, working in a cube. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Gray walls in a cube. <laughs> I love you, honey, but I want to go sunset see people on the shoot river. That works for me. You know, <laughs> trees just kind of like, oh, this is nice. People actually come out here, right? <laughs> um, so, so we, we saw to... the Dark Knight. What the hell is the name of that movie? The Returns Dark Knight. Or... No, the Dark Knight. It, well, the first one was Batman Begins. Yes. And now it's the Dark Knight. Okay, yes, whatever. The Dark Knight. And um, <laughs> I hate multiplex theaters, right? You know, I like the local theater. I like the theater with a broken screen that's playing the old French movies and stuff. That's just you know. If, if if I want to do my theater experience, I'll go in the next room and just watch it on my own screen and go have drinks and pause it, go to the bathroom. <laughs> and so we're sitting there, and it's nothing but commercials on the big screen. <laughs> it's like watching TV. I'm like watching cable all of a sudden. There's commercials, commercials, commercials. I'm 
pissed off. I'm just like, God. Oh, it's an understatement. I was afraid he was going to like scare the other patrons in the movie. So I'm like, wait a minute. I have an iPhone and I have headphones. I stick, I put my headphones on and I'm like, what in the hell is going to drown out this thing? Oh, here we go. An overture from a Wagner opera. <laughs> Bam! And it was beautiful. I'm watching the pretty images on the screen, and it's like the the, 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 the orchestra is just like swelling and playing. It's actually a really good overture. Um, one of my favorites. But anyway, um, it was really, really like helpful to just tune that thing out and just calm down because I was pissed off. I mean, just sitting there watching these commercials. You know, it's just like our, crazy. Our local theater doesn't have commercials. Do you guys like the Metroplexes? Do you like the big boom bond? Or do you, do you guys like dig kind of like Some the art do. house Some independent Some people like things? the Metroplexes. I, uh, I mix. So for big new special effects things that I really want to go see on a big screen in a theater, I plugging here. I really love the Cinematopia over in Vancouver. Yeah, we haven't been there yet, but that that's, place rocks. that's we, the place we should have been. We heard we need to there go there. There are two places I see it, the movies, and it's either something I want to see opening, and I'll go see it there, or I wait for it to come around to the Baghdad or the Laurelhurst, or yeah. old movie places like that, and th- that's yeah. all I go to. Is one of those two. You want the amenities. You want the beer and the exactly. wine and stuff. Yeah, I think I that's a great. casual place. But right. if, I really, if there's something I really want to see top-notch, then I'll go to Cinetopia. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, it's the smaller houses. What about you guys? Yeah, I'm, I live pretty close to Baghdad, so, you know, the drive home, you can see oh, what's there. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> walk down. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm kind of the same if it's, a, you know, the special effects. I'd be in Fred's Sound of Music every day. <laughs> I swear to God, by an old stereo yeah, equipment. You're not allowed in Fred's Sound of Music. It's, I love that place. You're Ever not since allowed I was in a there. kid, I would just be in there going... Oh, yeah, I need something to go with my Sansui Quadraphonic amp from 1973, you know. It's like a great place, but... So you actually grew up in Portland? Yes. Did you? No. No. Oh. Anybody? Mark, yeah, anybody. You did? I did. Sam? Yeah. That's a good yep. question. Todd did in the Todd? studio audience. Todd? Yeah. Media Chick, did you as well? Grow up, yeah. So we got two in the studio audience that grew up in Portland and the rest of y'all... No, I, I'm from no, Portland. No, Mark's... Oh, I'm Portland. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you so, were nodding your so head. So the the Portland natives actually outnumber us. Oh, good. Well, not oh, outnumber you. Rare. They outnumber. That never happens. Don and I. I know Where that you never Don? ever happens. That never happens. We're I'm originally from Ohio. I did a yeah, brief you're from the Midwest. tour in California on the way out. But. So how, Sam, California, California, <laughs> Northern California. <laughs> because that makes it better. Yeah. He quickly adds. Um, do, do you like Portland? better because of its size versus northern california or yeah i'm from a well northern as in a little town called chico Um, chico just similar to eugene college town about that size Um, we're talking about that we were talking about chico just the other night i grew up in california but i'm always quick to point out that i also lived in texas which is not any better but people tend to hate you less (laughs) if you were from somewhere other than just california like dawn's pretty safe because she can be like, oh, I'm from Ohio, and I stopped yeah. in California. I was only there for nine months. I was actually there for less than a year. Yeah, you're you're not from California yeah. then. Yeah. I'm like, I'm from California and Texas. <laughs> Feel sorry for me. I lived in the swamp. I really did, too. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Live oh, you're in. talking about Texas, not yeah. Vacaville. No, no oh, Vacaville's okay. not a swamp. You're talking about Baytown. I'm talking about Baytown. Yeah. Well, pretty much all of that part of Texas is a swamp. Right? Yeah, I lived I mean, in reclaimed swamp land Gulf when I lived in Texas. It's as a child, played with pigs and snakes. It was lovely. <laughs> well, in the Midwest, you've got like the tornadoes. I, and I grew stuff, up on a farm. Like, I, I played with snakes and salamanders and frogs and yeah. whatever else I could catch. Yeah, I liked tadpoles. So, what got you into tech? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I'm Thank not, you. I'm <laughs> it's probably the first one we've ever asked on Strange Love Live. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. Um, we had, and this is going to show my age, but an Atari 800 XL when I was growing up. Yeah. yeah. So I used to do a little programming in BASIC and, you know, basically make lines move across the screen because yeah. there just wasn't a whole, whole lot you could do. And yeah. um, I went to college actually to become a math teacher. And I went almost all the way through the program. The first time I got in front of kids, which was like my second to last semester, I realized, oh my God, I don't like kids. This is stupid. I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> and so computer science seemed like a logical switch from math because I had all, you know, more than half the courses already. So I switched to computer science and 
Worked out well. Worked out well. What What was the technology like when you were in school? So I did a lot of Pascal programming on yeah. Bax yeah. VMS. <laughs> um, we later switched to, we were doing some programming on Solaris boxes. With some Pascal, I think, and then a little bit of C. No, not C++ or Java. That wasn't quite around yet. Um, yeah, and then I my first job was actually as a sysadmin, so I administered Unix boxes for my very first job, and then I've done everything from market research to community management to, I don't know, a bunch of bizarre stuff. That was the tough thing for me. I mean, when I was in school, computers were not cool at all. I just couldn't get jazzed about them until, you know, college, and then it was like, oh, you could build your own PC, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, I know, then it was interesting. I actually you know? never worked on a on a PC like a, a Windows PC until I took my first job, and they put a PC on my desk, and I just used it to right shell into Unix boxes. But I was gonna say, is that paperweight? <laughs> <laughs> well, this was before Windows too. The wonderful MS DOS. Yeah, you know, and it was just like you know, it was always kind of interesting to build PCs and stuff like that. But you know, the whole mainframe world was just kind of like. Oh, it's kind of crazy, you know. Then one time yeah. on a job, I had to connect PCs to, you know, mainframes and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I'd like to learn about SNA and all these things, <laughs> these weird things that are, you know, how you connect. So, but, um, but I don't know. It just like, you know, it, it, I, I, I wouldn't, like, I remember going to computer lab in high school and they had something, probably it was an Apple based basic system and I was like look um, the computer club's got a program check it out it draws circles on the green screen and I was like wow that's really exciting I mean you know it's like I expected Star Trek right you know I expected you know walking up and going computer analyze you know and now we're here today and it's like there's all this stuff to be jazzed about you know the web and the interfaces and everything. But it's know. still not computer. Analyze my... Oh, but we're close. Tricorder we're, readings. We'll get there. <laughs> we're getting there. The singularities... Almost, we're almost there, right? I'll be happy so when they I have say. a transporter and a replicator. Really? Yeah. What about the That's downside wait, wait, of technology? Wait, which is more important to you, a transporter or a replicator? Oh, a transporter, because then you could transport the stuff you needed to you. Yeah. Well, and so will you be the first be. in the transporter and... No, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna be a, yeah. Are you I'll worried about the transporter sickness? Yeah, that was the that was the only redeeming thing of the the last Star Trek series is that they had the whole transporter issues, right? Oh, I'm not getting in that damn thing. Yeah. You know? it's like yeah, the hell you are, right? Now, you know, and then there's that philosophical thing now in the transport. Are you are you are you dying each time you go through that, or right? There's this big philosophical. Um, little thesis or does it about, kill you and you bring know, you back as yeah, a different person as a different person what do you think no yeah i don't know i don't know that it matters really yeah we're all meat puppets i think we? you'd have to <laughs> yeah. I, I think <laughs> you'd have to have like a big religious grounding for that to be yeah yeah i mean i mean if you felt like the same person i don't know that well that's the thing I would you i'm not as philosophical as, as you know would you feel or would it be some other You'd have you know, to go through the transporter to know if you felt like the same person. You know. When they invent one, I'll give it a try and let you know. You don't Ooh, think about the so downside of these things too often. Do you? I didn't say I'd be first. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Is there any? I'll go after you. <laughs> so we got the brain trust here. Is there anything I want to go around and figure out? Is there anything that scares you about technology or technology in the future? Dun dun dun. <laughs> uh, no. Well, you see studies of uh, the cost of technology. Uh, technology can do, do good or evil, and the cost continually goes down to where uh, it gets to where anyone could, you know, building an atomic weapon uh, yeah. becomes that much more uh, possible for much more of the population. So there's that, but I mean, you can't. So now you've given us some insight in your off time. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you can't, there's just, as long as you're doing good, then that's about all you can. Yeah, yeah. So you just see it as an individual choice <clears throat> that, you know, you're in technology and you're looking at, you know, at doing good, you know, versus 
identifying doing evil. I think sometimes it's hard. I think especially when you work for, you know, an industry, for corporations, sometimes that line blurs, though. I mean, maybe it's easier as you're a freelancer or whatever, but, you know, as you're doing certain jobs, you kind of wonder, what's the impact of this technology that I'm rolling out tomorrow? You know, will this be used for creepy homeland security or is this good stuff you know have you read cory doctor's little brother <clears throat> i i've heard of it and i haven't i haven't read it but i've i've heard a lot about it and i and i, I know what the premise of the story is it sounds really cool it's a good book yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but it, it's kind of all about the the evils of rfid and, and right and what could happen yeah in certain scenarios yeah, and I know he does a lot. He does a lot of writing and thinking about, you know, these things, especially, and then the whole intellectual property mm-hmm. issues and things like that. Because, you know, I and I always wonder as we roll out these technologies on the web, you know, privacy issues and all these different things. You know, is someone going to, you know, is there a downside or an upside? You know, not to get like all like into the whole Bill Joy thing. You know, we're all going to turn into a you know, a pile of gray goo at some point with <laughs> nanotechnology. But as you go down the road, you know this stuff is going to roll out and it's going to happen. And then you're kind of like thinking, now, how are we going to take charge of this, you know, of this technology over time? Um, you know, maybe maybe, maybe this so maybe socializing and technology and and um, socializing among folks, you know, with good intentions is part of that. You know, like what you see at Beer and Blog or Lunch 2.0 or something like that. You know, that's probably good good inroads. But I'm trying to figure it out because sometimes I worry about I people's have a, intentions. I have a studio. I have, an, I have a chat room question on a much more serious note. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't serious enough for you? <laughs> Don P. Don P. would like us to discuss and contrast <laughs> <laughs> Captain Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> Is this the... <laughs> We just got to turn this into the McLaughlin group, you know? I'm sorry. Jean-Luc Picard! Um, what say you? Um, Wrong! Yes. Um, with Captain Kirk. So first I think we oh should Lord. go around and find out who likes Captain Kirk better and who likes Picard better. Well, first find out if they even know who Captain Kirk is. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know who Captain Kirk is, Do will you, you know please leave Captain the Kirk room? you know who Captain Kirk is, Cammy Chaos? Yeah. So you're a youngin. Well, would you have married me if I didn't know who Captain Kirk was? Uh, you know, it really didn't come up in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and if it did, I don't think you should have married me. <laughs> well, actually, if you don't know who Captain Kirk is, we can't get married. I'm a Picard fan myself, I'll admit it. Why? Um, <laughs> because G- Captain Kirk sort of he's annoys, bald? annoys me. He's got the whole... I love you. That's what we like about him, though. Well, you know, he, he's all right. But, you know, Captain Picard's a little more philosophical, a little more... I don't know. A little more even-tempered. Boring. He's not boring. <laughs> he's Captain frickin' Picard. <laughs> okay. He doesn't sleep with someone in every single episode. Again, yeah. boring. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to ask the studio audience, because we've got three members... Who they prefer, Captain Picard or Captain Kirk? Miss Burroughs? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer Captain Kirk or Captain Picard? And if you don't know, just pick one. What am I supposed to do with that? Tell me which one you prefer. Haven't you watched enough Star Trek to know? I haven't watched that one, Star Trek. Okay, we're going to ignore <laughs> Miss Burroughs. Picard. Todd? He says that they, they both, both have their strengths. Yeah. But you have to choose one. Uh, He's going to say Janeway. I was going to ask Don P. <laughs> why Janeway and you know, Cisco and yeah, others. Janeway always seemed like she was based on Dagny Taggart from Atlas Shrugged. Hmm, wow. That was a literary <laughs> Todd, <laughs> Todd, reference. Todd's getting too <laughs> smart for us. It's too late. I'm the only one. Hey, hey, this is after hours. Um, yeah, choose okay. between the two that were presented to you. Clearly, there's not a drink in his. Yes, mouth. we like Todd. He's chosen Picard. He's chosen wisely. Media chick? Picard. 
Media right. check is also chosen wisely. In case you haven't noticed, I would choose Picard. So, the rest Sam? of the couch? I think I gotta stand up for Kirk. Yeah. He was the, the originator. Um, he defined the role. Uh, he defined the role of Captain Kirk. <laughs> I'm going to talk like this and have sex with blue women. Well, he, he gave it all he had. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he couldn't give any more. <laughs> Literally. Mark? I don't play favorites. Oh, ah. curse you. I think I think that means Picard wins. Really? Mm-hmm. Raise your hand if you voted for Picard. Oh, God. Yeah. And Leah did too, because I can make her do things. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. Well, what is it? And, and I realized I didn't load the Star Trek things yeah. in the sampler before i started william shatner loses on my show so is it is it no, four to three on. Is one it? two uh, wait a minute yeah three, is four it, yeah so two, you said out? you don't play favorites uh, yeah but you just brought up the Cap- captain kirk fight song oh mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we still win <laughs> and what is that fight song could you sing a little for us no no okay <laughs> I, I was promised I was promised a ballad or something. Do we have music? There should be karaoke time now. Well, without me singing. But all I I've don't got do loaded karaoke. up. No. You were gonna sing, Mark. Oh, no, 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 no. We didn't Sad. do drinks. What are you drinking? Yeah. My, oh boy, it's the same damn thing. My glass is empty. It was a dirty, dry Bombay martini. And we're drinking some um, <laughs> Columbia Crest Cabernet Sauvignon. 2005, I think, from here. I'm drinking water now. Cool. What do you guys like to drink? Lots of coffee. Lots of coffee? Yeah. And then beer in the evenings. What kind of beer? <laughs> uh, it's, well, seasonal. Dark beers in the winter and lighter beers. Really in the dark? Winter. Oh, yeah. You like the dark stuff? Yeah, okay. Especially on nitro. Ah, gotcha. What do you like to drink? Uh, coffee again in the morning and scotch. Scotch, single yeah. malt. Yeah. A little Lagavulin. Yeah. Oh, we have some of that upstairs. If I'd known that Ooh. previously, you would have that. had scotch yeah. during the show. I should have just <laughs> opened up the bar. What do you like to drink? Don? I know what Don likes to drink. I drink entirely too much green tea during the day. <laughs> Pretty That's much good for you. a constant, constant drink. And I drink red wine, and I drink gin and tonics. Nice, nice. Other things too, margaritas and. Fruity drinks if I'm in a My tropical location. Is. Cool. Oh yeah, you were in like. But if I'm at the Green Dragon, it has to be the gin because they make their own gin and it's really. Oh, phenomenal. you know, I I haven't I tried. Try I have not tried it yet. The homemade gin, I love. It's good. Yeah. It's good. I mean, it's not hard to make. It's grain alcohol and juniper berries. It's still good. Yeah, I went to a 1920s. I think you could turn off the drink music parties. now. Why? I'm still talking about drinks. Yeah, I think the drink music is done. I was talking. Oh, uh, never mind. I'll tell that funny story on another episode of Strange Love Live. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Normal has grown accustomed to the sound of his voice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? What else we got? I don't know. I think we can handle one more topic and then we're going to... You guys check out any of the Olympics night. on Silverlight? Oh, really? We're going to talk about the Olympics? I made it tech. I mentioned <laughs> Silverlight. Jesus. The Olympics? On Silverlight. We're going to talk about the. What, what did you have? You've seen in the Olympics, Dr. Normal? Mm, I've been really busy. When was the last year that you watched? Oh, Olympics? I used to watch the Olympics all the time. I've just been really busy. In, in like 16 years ago? There's no figure skating <laughs> right now, so I can't watch it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love the figure skating. No, but did you get to check out, check out any online, anything cool? I haven't really watched it online, but we've gotten sucked in on the TV and yeah. a couple of nights where one of us will turn it on to look at something and then it's just on and then I'm doing email and watching, you know. I don't so know, just the just the boob tube. Whatever. Feed. But that's unusual for us because we don't normally have the TV on at all. Yeah. But once you turn the Olympics on, you, get, you just get sucked in one right after the other. It's addictive. I don't have that problem. And you guys are just working all the time, so you had no time for... See, I can manage the catch, community and watch the Olympics. Olympics. Exactly. Do you guys even own TVs? Yeah. I think last week somebody didn't own a TV. Or was that the week before that? 
I don't know. That's good. I hate TVs. Yeah. You do everything online. I love my TV. That's the good part of technology. I love my TV <laughs> and my TiVo. Even more than I love my TV, I love my TiVo. No, yes, Media Chick points out that you can't have one without the other, and it's true. I don't know. Since getting a TiVo a couple of years ago, I I just can't live without it. I'd like to fast forward the no. commercials. <laughs> You got TiVo, you got Hulu, you got Juice. Like you got the whole damn thing, and you're all like all over the place. Yeah, the problem is, is that I haven't downloaded Juice onto my new computer yet. You gotta get that done. Yeah. Otherwise, somebody will be pissed off at you. I don't know anybody who might be pissed off at me. All right. You so, is there a current series that you just can't miss? Oh God. <laughs> <sighs> um, I really enjoy Burn Notice right now. It's a lot of fun because. Dr. Norval doesn't even know. Okay. He has no idea. I'm really enjoying Burn Notice. I, I think it's, you know, part campy and part blowing stuff up and and not at all practical in reality. And that's what I look for in my TV. I hate reality TV. No. I hate anything that's going to be too practical because I watch TV as a, as a method of escapism the same as I read fiction. I also enjoy Bones because I really liked the show Angel and David Boreanaz. <laughs> so I'm like, oh look, he's a really, really non-realistic FBI agent. Fantastic. So okay. it, it, we're the polar opposites, right? Because yes. like, if I'm going to watch TV, I'm going to watch like the History Channel, The Hunt for the Bismarck, or something. You know, it's like <laughs> I, I enjoy so everything the else is channel. crap, right? You I know? enjoy the History Channel, just not as much as I enjoy something that's not at all based in reality. I'm looking forward to Heroes coming back, but my very favorite TV show is um, The Venture Brothers. Yeah, okay, well, we share that. Yes. Venture Brothers is very fine material. What are your favorite TV shows? I don't really have any. I'll watch The Simpsons if they're on. Um, really? Have you ever seen The Venture Brothers? No, I haven't. Do you have cable? Oh, no, we don't. Oh, yeah. Well, well, we you, you can get them online. You can, yeah, you can get them online. It's true. Yeah, yeah I just, uh, actually, I've never had a TiVo or anything. I just built a Myth TV box, which yeah. is a Linux version yeah. of the same thing. Mm-hmm. A couple weeks ago, it's recorded thousands of hours. I can never watch of stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's a bunch of Venture Brothers on there. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I can burn you somewhere. Nice. Yes, the Venture Brothers. <laughs> yeah, the Myth. What, what kind of capture card did you put in it? HDTV. Which it's show? a PC HDTV 5500. Oh, cool, cool. They've come way down in price. Yeah, that was really cheap. It was like 120 bucks, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Myth TV, I mean, that's that's like, you know, TiVo was for training wheels. Myth <laughs> TV is for the real uber geeks, too. And it's come a long way in the past several years. Yeah, I, I built it like three weeks ago. I haven't watched a single show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I built, I built... Watch the Venture Brothers. Do they watch like, them? Watch yeah. them. Over 100 hours of stuff. I haven't watched any of it. Yeah, I built my own PVR. I didn't have enough horsepower to run Myth TV, was so that it was something the, else. Was that the, yeah. the box that used to record my shows for yeah. me? Yeah. And it was yeah. like all this crap there. And then I'd realize I have no time to watch this stuff, you know? So yeah. a cup full of things that I watched. <laughs> yeah. It's actually very... Well, and now the TiVo is just all the crap you like to watch no it's not actually i use it because i find that often during the day i have a six-year-old and i find that often during the day what's on is not appropriate you can for subscribe her. to podcasts over the tivo though. that's kind of cool yes, you can that's you can cool. actually watch I some did not know podcast that. shows on, you can right only on do TiVo. certain tivos well yeah. certain well certain podcasts as well yeah, yeah. Uh, our tivo is not really that fancy so it's kind of your basic well actually any any rss feed you can plug into it I think you just have to be able to talk to the TiVo. Like, you know, Dr. Doolittle. What are you, animal. TiVo whisperer? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I freaking I a, love I my TiVo. Kami Chaos, the TiVo whisperer. <laughs> I have a DirecTV TiVo, which doesn't... Which oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so it's you... It's a specific... Kind of yes. yeah, yeah, you have to have, like, the... The standalone, real TiVo. Convertio, you know, the TiVo yeah. thing, so... So what other questions do you guys want to ask us? <laughs> <laughs> Because now is when we wrap up the show and you get to That's ask right. us questions before we say goodnight. Because we really haven't talked enough about us. Because this show is to fil- facilitate us talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you start? What what first built up to where it came out as this? Um, now, I was yeah. joking about that and yeah, I didn't ask a real <laughs> question. No, that was a real question. I know. Um, at Christmas, during the holidays, we did a holiday lyric contest on my blog and in order to announce the contest we needed to play the music that they needed to write the lyrics for 
And so he brought me down here to record introducing it. And then he said, Merry Christmas, here's a podcast for you. And now you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of how it started. And then it was choppy and we did a, an episode here and an episode there. And then I think it, we started recording somewhat regularly in March or April. Yeah, we kind of started with blogger guests who were yeah we started we started blog blogging guests and lately we've been kind of talking to more kind of like portland tech folks there's just a lot of people to talk to right i mean yeah. and a lot of people doing interesting things it, so. it started almost exclusively skyping in blogging friends from all over mm. except for my one a blogger that came up to to portland to look for a house and while she was in town we interviewed her and then we had one Portland person, and that just kind of dominoed from there. And it's all kind of organic, and we have no idea what the hell we're doing. No. And that's the truth. <laughs> that's the best way. Yeah. Exactly. So they say. But it's been enjoyable. <laughs> so, and you've been podcasting for a while, right, Don? Or I have. I have done some podcasts. Some? I, I did a few um audio podcasts um on fast wonder blog that mm -hmm. were just people skyping in so i had stormy peters and scott Gaveton mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a couple others i think and it just it, it took up so much time and i sort of fizzled out on it and i did a bunch of video podcasts while i was at jive that were mostly either just me videotaping random developers talking about random topics or people doing screencasts that i would then edit down to something reasonable i think that's a i, I love it when companies do that i mean that's mm -hmm. kind of like the what is it channel channel, uh, channel nine. nine was it at microsoft, microsoft? yeah the one where robert scoble got mm -hmm. his start and that's that's just really cool because that's really you can actually see what people in this big faceless company are actually doing and working on you know and and so many companies still don't get that or they're a little scared of going down that path yeah, and you know, you know I, I actually think video is is kind of important to to do as a company um i'm personally i would just rather read it because i can read it faster than i can watch mm -hmm. it on video but mm -hmm. you know a lot of people really like the video format they really like to to see things and engage with things and you know if you want people to to engage with your stuff and hitting them from a variety of methods depending on what what they like i think really helps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do all of you listen to podcasts are you podcast listeners i i i'll be honest right now and say that i listen to Strange Love Life. <laughs> and I listen to life. this show because Dr. Normal has advised me to listen to myself <laughs> talking. Um, and uh, I listen occasionally to Hazelnut Tech. Yeah. But often have no idea what they're talking about. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'm not a big listener to or of podcasts. Uh, and you're not listening to the Silicon Florist podcast? He's only done one episode. <laughs> and I listen to the Silicon Florist podcast. To the dulcet tones. I think it's interesting. I mean, um, but he's done one. I'm, I'm asking them if okay. they listen to podcasts. I'm obsessed with podcasts. I listen to them all the time. So, oh, cool. what are your um, like three favorite podcasts? So, I listen to mostly tech podcasts. So, I would say that um, the Twit Network is mm -hmm. kind of a favorite. So, That's a great one. So, this week in tech, and yeah. also some of the um, side ones that he does, like Net at Night, are really good. Um, and then I listen to I listen to a whole bunch of daily news. So um, NPR, Wall Street Journal, CNET, InfoWorld, um, Science Friday is really good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I listen to I don't know, this weekend media. I listen to hours. I forgot one other, gym. but mm -hmm. the other podcast is I re I like Mark Coleman's, but it's not. Is it a video cast instead yeah. of a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. I like his, but it's not. I can't just listen to it. I have to watch it. Well, yeah, it's a it's a video cast. Yeah. So. So, I mean, that, that, that's the thing. I have a hard time. I, st I still like audio podcasts because if you're doing something, you can listen to it while you're... Otherwise, you got to, like, yeah. look at the podcast. Yeah, that's how I do all of the audio podcasts. I'm always doing it while I'm doing something else. So, while mm -hmm. I'm grocery shopping, while I'm at the gym, mm -hmm. while I'm on the bus, while I'm folding laundry. You know, right. Anytime when I'm doing something that I have to be using my hands or... I do like, I can't I like listening to stuff folding laundry. But, you know, I've run out of podcasts quickly since I don't listen to many of them. So there you go. I don't listen to music. Um, well, it's... Do you oh, guys... Um, I think they were podcast? shaking their heads. Not so much? I have... In the past, I was in the habit of... A, I was riding the bus into work. So yeah. So I'd listen to CNET and NPR, were mainly mm -hmm. where I was. But not so much anymore. 
some I've noticed that some that I started out with for a few years and now they've kind of lost their edge for me. Some of the main ones, some some of the CNET and yeah, I found even Twit. Some I've noticed kind of a little bit. It's gotten a little. I don't know what it is. It's like the formula is not getting mixed up enough or something, and you know. Does the crazy money guy do a podcast? Uh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he used to have a podcast. What's his name? Uh, Jim Kramer. Yeah. I think yeah. But those are all like simulcast. Some of those podcasts, like you're talking about NPR Science Friday, they're basically. The broadcast, which is mm-hmm. tied up. I mean, it's like, there's like, um, you know, Meet the Press and all of those as well that are all simulcast. In fact, I think almost all of them. This American Life was a big one because they resisted, I think, mm-hmm. putting out a podcast until they finally, you can now get that one for free on iTunes as well. So. Oh, and Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. That was, yeah. That was a great one. Yeah. But that's just stuff you would listen to on the radio, but because mm-hmm. you're storing it, you can actually actually do that you're writing something I was trying so desperately to be subtle (laughs) well so what are you writing Gammy Chaos I told you I was that kid in class that got in trouble for writing notes this is not for you okay so (laughs) do you have any other questions or would you like to just write notes during the show and we'll just all wing it right here um yeah Okay. So it's uh it's about time. I know. I, I tried to tell you that earlier. Okay. Well we were talking about podcasts. <laughs> well Are there are there any further questions from the lovely chat room? I don't think so. I don't think there are. I think my lovely note writing has ended the show in a disastrous exactly. way. Well thanks for coming in and uh sharing Shazao and other various things with us. It was lovely to talk to all of you. Oh, in case anyone isn't already going to the Anti-Prom, the Anti-Prom is a local fundraiser. Check out upcoming.com and look for the Anti-Prom. That's right. I'll be there. So good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Ryan, who couldn't be here. 